I was taking a walk along a country road one evening, and as I passed a field in which about three or four dozen cows were grazing, I happened to be singing to myself a song by Mahler. Oddly enough, it was the song called St. Anthony's Sermon to the Fishes. And as I walked along, I glanced at the cows, and I noticed that they, in turn, were glancing at me. So I stepped up the volume just a bit, and with that, the entire herd converged on the nearest fence. And it was an extraordinarily touching occasion. I really felt that a very special bond had been established. Uh, certainly, I've never encountered so attentive an audience before. In any event, I have no idea whether such repertoire has any appeal for elephants, but I am here to find out. So, <clears throat> let's see. Antonius so predig, hier schürfen predig, er geht zu den Fischen und predigt den Fischen, sie schlug mit den Schwänzen, im Sonnenschein glänzen, im Sonnenschein, Sonnenschein glänzen, sie glänzen, sie glänzen. You messed up the words. Perhaps something in a slower tempo. <laughs> they tell me I have never done it, and I certainly do not plan to do it now, that it is possible to walk through the city following a network of ravines and river valleys like this one without ever once setting foot to concrete. And somehow or other, though I don't plan to do it, I do find that a rather impressive statistic. There are two notions, I think, which uh, grew up, in a sense, in the 60s in North America and played a very important role in the development of Toronto. One, obviously, was our sudden concern for the care and feeding of the environment. That sort of thing was all very old hat to European city planners, but it's quite novel here because the North American tradition, of course, has always been one of extreme pragmatism as regards the design of the city. And uh, this kind of literal trailblazing in the middle of the city would have been unthinkable two or three generations ago, certainly, maybe even one generation ago. The other notion, which seems a very different on the surface, but is, I think, very compatible and very, very important, is the idea of technology as the master of the environment. Technology is, in large measure, responsible for the fact that, despite my distaste for all cities, I continue to live in this one. For me, the idea that technology does provide an alternate environment, that it can transcend the tooth and claw survival of the fittest laws of nature, is a very comforting concept. I've never understood why some people find it so threatening, and its ability to make the necessity of musical performance in a public arena absolutely irrelevant has literally changed my life. These days, needless to say, kids take for granted the sort of close contact with technology which was simply not available for my generation. And this place, which is called the Ontario Science Centre, was intended to refute the static, we teach, you learn approach of the conventional museum. It's taken for granted here that the visitor will be a participant and that without his participation, in fact, the center and each of its exhibits would lack a raison d'etre. In my youth, Toronto was also called the City of Churches, and indeed the most vivid of my childhood memories, insofar as they have to do with Toronto at all, have to do with churches. They have to do with Sunday evening services, not Sunday morning ones, what with all that sunlight. They have to do with evening light, filtered through stained glass windows, and with ministers who concluded their benediction with the phrase, Lord, give us the peace that the earth cannot give. Monday mornings, you see, meant going back to school and encountering all sorts of terrifying situations out there in the city. So those moments of Sunday evening sanctuary became very special to me. They meant that one could find a certain tranquility, even in the city, but only if one opted not to be a part of it.
I don't go to church these days, I must confess, but I do repeat that phrase to myself, the one about the peace that the earth cannot give, very often, and find it a great comfort. What I've done, I think, while living here is to concoct some sort of metaphoric stained glass window, which allows me to survive what appear to me to be the perils of the city, much as I survived Monday mornings in the schoolroom, I guess. And the best thing I can say about Toronto is that it doesn't seem to intrude upon that hermit-like process. It's been fascinating to get to know it after all these years, but not even our exploration of it has made me a city convert, I'm afraid. I am more than ever convinced, though, that, like Leningrad, Toronto is indeed a truly peaceful city. But perhaps I see it through rose-colored glasses. Perhaps what I see is nothing more than mirage. I hope not, though, because if that mirage were ever to evaporate, I'd have no alternative but to leave town. Mm -hmm.